course, technology has hugely improved our way of life. In less than a second, we have access to the wealth of worldwide knowledge which is the internet. The intelligence of our planet at the push of a button. To test if we are safe, we made a survey to record people's answers and ideas. What the data showed certainly raised some questions on our safety. What? People keep vital information such as pins and bank details on their phones and computers, which are easily hacked. We also came up with some alarming but truthful statements. Almost all of the people who don't have a GPS say that they would never get lost without one. Whereas 85% of the people who do have a GPS say that they would always get lost without one. Re -re Recalculating. On the subject of phones, over 50% of people say that they rely more on their phones than their own memories. Yeah. But is technological advance a good thing? Should we stop now before it is too late? Or should we carry on and face the consequences? Are we safe? Hello, I'm Jack, and along with Philip, I created the hacking machine in Scratch. Everybody is scared of being hacked, from credit cards to computer data, and what I'm here to tell you is, you should be. Oh no! Hacking or breaking code is something that has always challenged humankind. And a simple coded message broken saved loads of lives in the war. During the Second World War, the Enigma machine saved loads of lives. We created a code-breaking machine using a program called Scratch. Scratch is a programming language that turns JavaScript, the code that people use to create computers, into blocks that can be joined together like Lego bricks to create code. Say I put a move 10 steps block under a when this sprite clicks block. Once I click the character, it will move 10 steps forward. It's that simple. It took three hours to develop a program that can hack a four-digit code in under 10 seconds. It's scary to think that a program created by children can hack things in one second. Think what a real hacker could do. Believe me, I am the one person in the world you do not want to touch your credit card. <laughs> What? Hello, I am Philip, and I would like to talk about modern technologies and how they affect us in many areas. Everybody dreams of a car that can drive itself. The first plot for a self-propelled vehicle was created by Leonardo da Vinci in 1478. Mamma mia! Since then, many things have changed and many odd attempts have been made. Currently, we can assume that the best attempt to make a self-driving car is the Google car. The Google car is a self-driving car that uses sat-nav technology to navigate. Sat-nav is not always so accurate, so it also uses laser and radar sensors. The three pieces of data are then put together by the AI to confirm that things exist. But, does it work properly? Well, most of the time. Hey! To test the safety of a self-driving car, we built a small model using little bit technology. We started by attaching two mounting boards. We then used Velcro to hold the modules. We then used a basic little bit power module. To command the motors, we used a pair of LEDs and sensors. We finally used two standard motors. We built a track based on light sensing. We built two tracks with identical circuits. One has a black line in the middle, so the self-driving car can navigate based on the principles of luminosity. 
Basically, when on a white surface, the light reflects onto the light sensors and they send an on signal to the motors. Our car can do a lap in 43 seconds without damaging any obstacles. How fast are you? Oh hi, I'm Oliver. I work in a remote control car. Car is controlled by a human using a remote control, which we made out of the toy little bits. It uses two levers. Each lever controls one wheel of the car. If you push one lever forward, it turns around. I can whiz around that track in 11 seconds, Ferp. Camera, huh? You have no idea what you're doing. 